Cleveland, this is for you. Colin Sexton goes number eight overall last like night. What you did there. To the Cavaliers, <laughs> and he did not waste any time making a pitch to LeBron James. Now, for what it's worth, Maria asked him to do this, so it's not something he had planned and written ahead of time. True. You'll hear the moment here right after he was drafted. Make your pitch to LeBron James to stay in Cleveland with you. Man, LeBron, let's do it. Let's do it. I see you need a few pieces, that one extra piece this past season. Hey, let's do it. Uh, let's go back to the finals. Let's do it. <laughs> his his jacket matched the hat. It, it's the Porzinga uh, suit from. Uh, is it not? Or did he know he was getting drafted by Cleveland? Is, is the first he thought that it. I had is he's wearing the Cavaliers colors exactly. I think he was surprised. Universe. I don't think their camp was expecting Cleveland to take him. Um, you know, Shea Gilgis Alexander was also in the mix there. He didn't end up working out for them. I like the pick. The young bull, he, he has a lot of intensity to his game, uh, picks up 94 feet, can get downhill. You know, I think you had to make this selection regardless of what LeBron's going to do. Um, you can't, you know, hold your team and your future hostage because of that. And I don't know if the number eight pick is really going to move the needle, how many rookies come in and really help you win playoff games right away. Um, so I like the pick. I think he's going to be a guy they can kind of hand the keys to in the future. And for me, a lot of times it's not – the what, it's the who. You got to look deeper into the rosters in the Eastern Conference and see who are the actual point guards that have been productive. So you have John Wall, who's, you know, basically a 2010 guy that gets you a couple of steals. The other guy that's been an all-star the last two or three years is actually Kyle Lowry. So when I look at young players like Trey Young and Colin Sexton, as they continue to mature, that's a barometer that I say, maybe he could get there if he continues to improve. It's just interesting to me that it felt like the winds had been shifting <clears throat> between those two guys, Sexton and Young, who you know, right. sort of played the same position, towards Sexton going ahead of Young. So for Trey Young to go markedly ahead of Sexton last Very night, I thought was so. one of the upsets. That's yes? what, was that surprising? Because, well, I know both you guys love Sexton and maybe a little bit more than you loved Young. I know you did. So was that surprising that, you know, at some point yesterday everyone had Trey Young at 12 and then all of a sudden we find him basically at three? He had a wide range. I think if that trade didn't end up going down, he would have gone six to Orlando. Um, there's the factor of butts and seats as well. I think that's a big part of it. He's an owner's pick. Uh, in addition to obviously being extremely skilled, he's going to put people in the stands. Uh, he's going to bring an excitement to, I mean, a lot of those teams are, are losing teams that are looking to get back on track. Uh, so it, it makes some sense to me, but that race was tight all season long with those two. And then Shea Alexander, too, and not, not to keep harping on that, but I think he's in that mix also to potentially be, you know, the best point guard from this It's interesting game. you say that uh, Trey Young had, had a wide range because he has, of course, unlimited range, uh, as we know, in his game. <laughs>